Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome to Going In Raw, the only wrestling pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. Uh, we're available here at youtube.com forward slash YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, it's the news. It's the, we're doing this in a, a setup that we don't usually do. Yeah, and early in the morning. <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. We're also available at iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud.com forward slash Stephen Larson, uh, Google Play, our iHeartRadio. But anyway, anywhere, any podcast app you can type in. Going in raw and will probably be there, I would imagine. Correct. Um, so, also want to give a shout out to our Patreons or to our Patreon, our patrons at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. I know I'm a mess. Uh, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Uh, we love you guys. And tomorrow on our Tuesday show uh, is when I give all those shout outs. So, everybody who's been pledging that money to support the cause throughout the week, you'll be getting your shout out tomorrow. Correct. But first. We got two things. We got to talk about backlash. We also got to, Dan's not here. He's yep. dealing with some business of his own. Uh, yep. He uh, didn't actually say this, but he. But I'm going to extend his well wishes to everybody. Okay. Is that rude to do on his behalf? I would I mean, think I mean, that you would want. You're speaking for him. You're putting words in his mouth. But. He would want to say, "Oh, I want to extend my well wishes to everyone." All right, that's, that's fine. what he would say in his British accent. Okay. Uh, so we wish him the best, and yes. uh, hopefully he'll be with us uh, for our Clash of Champions. In two weeks. In two weeks. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, we have some business to take care of before we get into Backlash real quick. Oh, goodness. So on Sunday, we put up a video of the nine worst heel and face turns. Correct, Amundo. And uh, in that video, we said that Kevin Nash booked himself to win the title from Goldberg at Star K 98. Which is a completely reasonable assumption to make. Yeah, and I, I thought I heard it um, in one of the documentaries. Uh, I think it was a rise and fall of WCW, and that's why I put it in the script. Because I was like, oh, I remember hearing about that. From- I thought that Goldberg himself had sort of made allusions to that as yeah. well. I, I, honestly, yeah. like when you said that, like we sometimes will fact check each other. We'll fact check each other um, because collectively... Like we're but but I was on the pa- on the same page with you. I was like, if anybody asked me who booked Kevin Nash to win at Star K ninety eight, I would have said Kevin Flippin Nash. Yeah, but anyways, do we know uh, who the booker was? Several time? people, several people uh, in the comments of that video and on Twitter said, "Hey, Kevin Nash didn't book himself to win that match." So I looked into it last night, um, and. Uh, Turns out that he wasn't made the head booker of WCW till February 99. Prior to that, though, he did work uh, as part of the creative team. Okay. All right. All right. Do we know who the head booker was at 99? It was Bischoff. It was... Bischoff had final say on everything. Oh, okay. When did Bischoff, did Bischoff leave in February 99? No, he just didn't want to handle or lead creative anymore. <laughs> okay. Look, if anybody out there honestly thinks that Kevin Nash didn't have a hand in Kevin Nash winning at Starrcade 98, then you're absolutely insane. Absolute. Two months later, he ends up being the head booker, and you think two months before he didn't book himself to win the world title? I'm sorry, but I'm okay saying that he booked himself to win the world okay. title. I wanted to address it. People are mentioning it. So That is that is far less of of a slight than than getting Tanahashi's name wrong. Or did I say it was a Tanaha, Tanahashi? <laughs> You put Tanahishi in the script, but I think it's uh, Tanahashi. It's Tanahashi. Yeah. I'm new to New Japan. I'm new New Japan. All right, let's talk about Backlash. Yeah, let's talk about Backlash. All right. Uh, so, okay, number one, our predictions. So we did a predictions video. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had predicted a couple of things. And you know what's funny? So we, we predict the pre-show. Yes. We predicted that uh, because we noticed that the card itself looked pretty thin. Yes. Um, and so we were thinking, how are they going to beef this card up? So via either the pre-show or the actual card itself, our biggest get was, our biggest score was, we said Apollo Crews versus Baron Corbin. They were going to yeah. finally decide who the going in raw wrestler of April 2016 was. Yeah. Back when we cared about these two. Um, and uh, Corbin went over, so I yeah. win that. No, we both called that, though. 
Right, but in the grand scheme of the going in oh. wrestler of the year or of, of all time, it's Baron Corbin. Uh, so kind of they, like we've moved, we've moved on from that. I think we've definitely moved on. Who do you think our going in raw wrestler, our official going in raw wrestler now is? There's a couple that can make a case, like Magnum TA can make a case. Yeah, that, that was the first name that that came to mind. Yeah, but it is, remember, it's like, from a month to a month, you know, like month to month, it changes. It does. And remember, like we had in our early days, it was prime time Brian Lee. Yep. And that was only like four months ago. Yeah. I like how I, I like how we just move on. We just move on. Yeah. Yeah. All those all the impressions that people want me to know, we just move on. New impressions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Keep it new, new era, new era. So, uh, yeah, Corbin. So there was like a backstage segment during the pre-show, I think, like at the beginning of the pre-show. When when did that fucking set? When when did when was that match set up? You because you weren't watching, I was. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, maybe it was early in the kickoff show. Maybe it was like early in the pre-show because I maybe. saw it happen backstage, but I didn't know if that was like previously on uh, main event or whatever it was. Oh, I don't know. I, I didn't get to your house till this match had already started. Anyways, it was Cruz to talking to either Shane or Daniel Bryan. I forget who. And then Shane uh, and then Baron Corbin comes in and he starts delivering a slow, awkward promo on Cruz saying, "Where do you late for a spelling bee?" And then uh, uh, Cruz says, "No, but tonight I'm gonna kick your a s." And then before he got the last S in, because YouTube was going to demonetize him, uh, Dan O'Brien stepped in and said, hold on before you use foul language. Hold, <laughs> hold on there before you use foul language. How about tonight, you guys in the in the kickoff show, at the main event of the kickoff show, uh, you guys go at it one-on-one. -on -one. How do you say about that? Because sure. Daniel Bryan is Jesse Ventura now. Yeah, yeah. And they said, well, yes, I said please. sure because I, I was expecting you to, to, to ask me. Do you know why? Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Yeah. Uh, so we saw Cruz versus Corbin in the pre-show. Uh, a good Corbin, match. Corbin went over. It was actually a really good match for both these guys. Yeah. Surprisingly. Like, you know, I mean, Cruz can put on a good match. Cruz has a lot of good moves. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's there necessarily, like, storytelling-wise, but he's got a lot of good moves. Mm -hmm. um, Corbin is a big guy. Um, and But I do love his finisher. I love his finisher because he always gets his opponent to... Get into the finisher. Get into the what's it called? The end of days. Lone yeah. Wolf, well, end of day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he have one? What was the other one? Well, he, he has the the spinning uh, side suplex. It's called the deep six. Deep six. That's okay. Okay. But this was the this was the end of days. Yes. Uh, he always gets his opponent to get into the end to get to get into position for it in a really cool way. And on top of that, it's just a really cool looking move. Like I yeah. really, I think it's a really cool looking move. It looks really yeah. it looks badass. Yeah. Uh, and Cruz, being uh, athle as athletic as he is, was able to sort of swoop into the move in a really cool way, made for a dramatic finish. But yeah. all in all, it was actually this this match should have been, in my opinion, it should have been on the main card. Yeah, I agree. They should have done like spotlighted two of the tag teams that that don't get a lot of play. They should have spotlighted maybe the Vod Villains. We said this in, in our predictions. We're like, we want to see some tag teams put the Vod yes. Villains there against maybe the Ascension. Yes. They go back, I think, a ways. They know each other from NXT. They probably yes. could have put on a really solid pre-show match. Yeah. Cruz versus Corbin, they did a really good job. I thought I, – I, I would love to see these guys, like, all going in Raw Wrestler of the Year aside. I, I'd like to see these guys in a, in a, in a program together. I think it worked yeah. for them. Uh, they need to be in a best-of-seven series. Yeah, I agree totally. So, uh, let's see here. Then we got to the main card. Yeah. And then uh, our internet went down, so we didn't see a lot of the beginning for Daniel Bryan and Shane – yeah, uh, missed Shane, pretty much all of it. Shane came down to a decent pop. Daniel Bryan still comes down to like one of the top three pops uh, in the company. In the company. In the company. Uh, they came down. I'm sure they said a bunch of stuff. Like, I'm glad that we lost internet then and not later. It was yeah. my wife dinking around the living room trying to set up this new toy bin for Alabama, and she unplugged something. And I'm like, "Woman, what are you doing?" And she's like, "Oh God, you're annoying." And I'm like, "It's my job." supposed to be watching wrestling right now and you're unplugging shit so we resolved it everything's okay i apologize that's all you got to do kids out there just apologize just uh, guys just say i'm sorry doesn't yeah. matter if you're in the right just say i'm sorry yeah <laughs> uh we had a women's title uh yes, six pack did. challenge for the yes, we uh, did. champion the first smackdown women's championship yes it was elimination Yes, it was. So what happened? It was a good match. Well, uh, these uh, all the matches on the card, since there's only six of them on the main card, yeah. they're all given time. Yeah. Which I really like because, you know, you most pay-per-views you have two or three matches that are given 15-plus minutes. 
Right. And it seems like every match on here got at least 12. I, I wonder. Didn't look at the official times or the unofficial times on Wikipedia, mm-hmm. but it felt like every match went at least 10, 12 minutes, most of them longer. I think and I like mean, that. This is sort of an un. Uh, sort of an I guess an unintentional con- consequence of having a depleted roster <laughs> yeah um, is that we might I mean that this might be the thing like Smackdown might be the show where on the in, in their pay-per-views we're gonna get longer matches and I thought that this, I thought it worked so well yeah across the board um, yeah. giving the women all this time to sort of breathe in their match everybody got a spot everybody got some shine everybody told a little story I was actually yep. really entertained by this match there was oh yeah there was a couple of botches. I mean, there was one specific segment where Naomi was trying to do something. You know, her her grasp was exceeding her reach. Um, she was trying to uh, uh, do like a, a head scissor thing or like a flip Natalia over the top rope from outside, and it was just an. It was a clay. It was like a, it was like thirty seconds of just sort of oh don't no, okay wait, don't just don't just stop doing that just stop doing that. Um, but you know, small botches aside. It was a really entertaining match yeah. for the story that was being told. I'm looking on Wikipedia, so granted, these are unofficial times. Sure. Um, the shortest match on the main card was 10 minutes. Oh, wow. Two seconds. Wow. And that was the, the tag championship match. Wow, that's crazy. Usually that's, on that's most pay-per-views, the shortest match would be like five to seven. Yeah, yeah. And then the women got <laughs> almost 15 minutes. Uh, the Miz and Dolph got about 18 and a half. Mm-hmm. And AJ and Dean got about 25 minutes. Wow, yeah, that was a good match. Uh, so, okay, so women's title eliminated. My my pick for women's champion. Another, I'm, 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 maybe go over an underdog. Maybe an underdog first and have Becky chase a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alexa Bliss, my pick, out first. Just yes. pff, Steve, fuck you, you're done. Uh, Naomi, who had the coolest outfit. They all, they all. By the way, they all sort of wore like new pay per view outfits. Yeah, which I thought was really cool. Naomi's was my favorite. Yes. Like somebody mentioned this, they're like, I want to see these on like some Jordans. I want to see all these on some like at least just some or some. What are the ones now with the net, the netting on them? What are they called? The 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 fly net. What are they called? Oh yeah 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 yeah. Fly knit. Knit fly knit looks like netting. I want to see her design that design that green like electric design stuff. Yeah, on some shoes. We'll see it on some shoes. Yeah, I agree. And she looked rad. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. But Naomi out next. Uh, yeah, she tapped out uh, when Natty put her in the sharpshooter. Uh, Natalia went out after that. Yeah, uh, Nikki Cur- Bella did her okay. thing. She moved to Natalia. And then uh, that left uh, a really good story being told right now between Nikki and Carmella. Carmella yeah. is is giving it her everything in this heel this heel turn of hers, and she's doing really well. She's doing really well. She's doing so really Carmella, well. Car- Carmella eliminates Nikki via roll up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they're 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 giving her some her like leg submission thing. I don't know what they call it. Um, but uh, they're giving that, well, they're making that strong. Yeah, giving them a lot of play. I like that. But then after uh, Nikki was eliminated, she slaps Carmella, mm-hmm. and then Carmella takes out her frustration over being slapped by Nikki on Becky. And starts she looked like she was giving on. her some stiff, some stiff shots. I mean, open hand slaps, but still, they were they were stiff. She yeah. was wailing on her. She was like, "You hit Bay, you touch Bay." She was good. She was really good. Yeah, and then Becky hits what? Three exploder suplexes. Yeah. And eventually gets uh, Carmella to tap out. To the, what, disarmor? Disarmor. It's It's where it looks like Becky's got like a dingus. Yeah, you like saying that. But it's really the other person's arm. Tell me it's not true. I wouldn't argue with you. Looks like she has an erect penis. Looks like she has an erect penis. But like a massive one, you know. But it's not really. It's just somebody's arm, and then she makes him yeah. tap out. Yeah. Uh, so Becky Lynch, your inaugural SmackDown Women's Champion. Correct. Looked, she looked great. I, I was. I, I love her merch shirt look. You know this. Yeah. She had on some other ugliish, like like a tight, sh- like a tight spandex shirt. Instead, I didn't like it. But regardless, she looks great as champion. She does. Hopefully, and she gave a, a great interview afterwards too. Oh yeah, she's the best, dude. She's so like. There are there are a couple people in the company, who you can tell, are having a lot of fun. Yes. AJ Styles is definitely one of them. Becky Lynch is another one. Yes. She enjoys being there so much, and that's so much fun to watch. Yes. I love that. 
Yeah, it's great. Uh, they're they're all night. They're promoting some kid named Jagger Eaton. Apparently, he used to be a skateboarder. Yeah, he has some show on Nickelodeon now. I wish him well. Uh, I really don't want him on WWE programming though. It's kind of annoying, and especially when he's like burying the Miz in segments. I just don't. I don't see the point. And he's like. <laughs> I get it. Uh, so all I know, somebody on Twitter said that he used to be a skateboarder. And now he's got his own show on Nickelodeon. I don't know if it's a scripted show or like a reality show. I, I hope it's not scripted because, man, his line reads need a lot of work. When you make the Miz, when you're in a scene with the Miz and the Miz looks like freaking, you know, Pacino in like Dog Day Afternoon. Yeah. Then you, you need some training. You need some acting coach lessons. Seriously. He's a kid. I'm not going to pick on him. Just giving us some life advice. Okay. Number one, always apologize. Number two, get some acting lessons. <laughs> Bray beats down Randy Orton. Yeah, so notes. before the pay-per-view, there was a bunch of news floating around the internet that Randy was going to get pulled from Backlash because he was hurt. Right. Ooh. Um, and it later on, I believe, closer to the actual uh, pay-per-view, yeah. um, I believe it was Wrestling Observer, mentioned that it could have been concussion related mm. and so uh, they were hoping wwe that is were hoping that he, uh, he would be cleared in time to participate eh, it turns wrong. out he was not so therefore bray had to beat up randy's ankle yeah. lower leg yeah um to make sure he was not available to wrestle during the show right exactly so we saw that we kind of kind of saw that coming in some manner they were going to get randy out of this one yeah i was um, kind of hoping they would make the the bray's beat down more dramatic Oh, I know, right? You know, it looked so like I, I like tweeted this out. Like it looked dominant. like a it looked like a demo from Two K Seventeen's backstage brawling feature. Actually, so, it looked less dramatic than that, to be honest. Yeah, it did. <laughs> this was something because, like, when we were doing the worst uh, face and heel turn video, uh, I was watching that part where Mister Perfect, sorry, Kurt Hennig, got a. Uh, supposedly beat down by the NWO before he turned on the Horseman. Right, and there's this this segment where Mean Gene opens the door and Mr. Perfect's just laying on the floor. <laughs> Was there any blood? No. <laughs> Perfect could have been taking a nap. <laughs> That's what it looked like. <laughs> there was no evidence of, of any sort of, uh, of, of altercation whatsoever. He was just lying on the floor. That's great. <laughs> oh man. So anyways, uh, Randy, uh, took a nap. And uh, Bray, let's just talk. We didn't talk about the Bray, but we okay. can talk about that match. So Bray comes, Bray's out there. He comes down later on, and he tells the ref, "All right, you ring that bell and and count to ten, so I can get my official win." Yeah. So Bray did get a win over Randy Orton. He did. And then immediately after, before as he's trying to leave, which so much of this is stupid. So much yeah. of this is annoying because Bray. Bray shouldn't be the guy that the referee checks into doing into doing a match. And I know, you know, the referee obviously is getting his orders from on high. I get that. But Bray should be the one to intimidate the shit out of the referees to the point that they're scared yes. to announce that he has a match. Yeah. Nobody's and I, we've said this ad nauseum. Nobody is scared of Bray Wyatt. Yeah. He can call himself the new face of fear all he wants. No one is scared of him. Nobody is scared of him. And why? Why? I mean, is he still being punished? Because I feel like it's just gotten worse. I honestly do feel like there's there was sort of at the starting from the draft, there was sort of he he, re, he started reaching new lows of people no selling the shit out of him. Yeah. Because you need to, if you're going to be in a program with him. You need to act like you're freaked out by the guy. Yeah. That's basic. That's 101 right there. There, there thought, shouldn't be any fucking... Go ahead. Oh, I was saying, I thought there would have been a great opportunity to instill some actual uh, fear Yeah, in anybody that come, that's going against Bray. Like, at the end of this, I'll, I'll just move forward. Um, so Kane comes out. Yeah. Gets announced that there's a no DQ, no holds barred match between Bray and Kane. All right. Um, at the end of which, Orton comes out, uh, RKO's Bray, Kane chokeslams Bray, Kane gets the win. Right. Imagine if this had happened. 
if Randy had RKO'd Bray, mm-hmm. and as Kane was getting ready for the choke slam, Bray pops up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like his backward right, right thing right. he does. How awesome would that have been? If Even he had better, no sold the RKO. So Randy's limping up the ramp after he RKO's him, thinking one, that Bray's that Bray's going to lose. Thinking that Bray's going to lose. Bray does that pop up thing right as Kane's sort of walking towards him and thinking that he's going to get up. He pops up, but he pops up in a manner that he's immediately directly staring at Randy and he starts laughing at him. Yeah. And as Kane walks to him, without looking, Bray kicks him in the balls or something. Yeah. Because it's no DQ. Yeah. Gives him a sister Abigail, Bray wins. Yeah. Randy is mildly, at least, freaked out. Yes. How does that How does that hurt anybody? It doesn't. That doesn't hurt anybody. It's it's absolutely he should be the villain of a horror movie. Yes. The guy that no matter how many times you beat Freddy Krueger, he's always going to show up in your nightmares. Yep. 10 oh fucking 1 people. Yep. I mean how, how is it how is it they've they've gone through so many of our suggestions here on the show. <laughs> and I don't think for a second anybody watches this from WWE Creative. No. But we have been watching long enough that we can do a fairly decent job of seeing perhaps where some of these storylines are headed, yeah. what makes sense logically, what pieces should be moved around. Yes. Hopefully, this is going to be the one that they'll eventually fall in line with. And maybe they just really think, like you suggested before, that at any point they can put, they can uh, have Bray go on a winning streak mm-hmm. and he'll be relevant again. And his character is so strong that yeah. I, I I will always hold to that. Yeah, I will always hold to that because we've seen that we've seen that on occasion. Kind of a good example would be uh, CM Punk just pre pipe bomb. He was injured for injured for a spell. Came back, did commentary. You know, they they didn't. He was the world champ a couple times, and he main evented a bunch. Yeah, but he wasn't like over over. I mean, the straight of society stuff was really really good. Yeah. Um, but it, he was the kind of personality that he could be a meet, you know, they could punt him in the back and keep him out of the world heavyweight scramble, world heavyweight championship scramble that he was so pissed off about. Yeah. He could be buried, perhaps, potentially. And he was the type of personality that he beats John Cena. You still believe it. Yeah. So Bray Wyatt has that personality and has the character and has. As you like to say, Gravo, oh, hey, Gypsy, has the gravitas in terms of his personality and his charisma that he can get over yeah. any amount of burial. You know, it's not like he's fucking his well, brother. It's not like he's Bo Dallas. We, we saw that too during the, the Reigns Triple H program. There's yes. that one bra where the Wyatt family came out and kind of confronted Triple H when mm-hmm. he had the belt. Yeah. And the crowd went nuts. Oh, went nuts. And and it's it's the kind of thing that you know, we've always, we've sort of spoke recently about how Dolph Ziggler has kind of been reaching his ceiling. You know, it's like okay, so he main evented SummerSlam or he main evented the SmackDown belt on in SummerSlam. Yeah, and that was good. That was good. They're sort of building him up. They're kind of they they have him in a, in the only upper mid card sort of feud right now with the Miz because those are the only two upper mid card guys there are really pretty much. Um, and it's, and it suits him. Like he, it looks good on him, you know, but we yeah. still feel that Dolph is a, he's in this weird limbo. He's above the IC title, but we don't feel like he's ever going to be booked to win the world title. Yes. Um, so it's a weird limbo. I don't see Bray ever getting to that point where he has that ceiling yeah. be, just because he's such a force of nature that he, He's above all that. I mean, yeah. in some ways, the way he talks, it makes him it, it makes his character naturally above title. You yeah. know, we he, we've seen him fight the Undertaker, which is above title. Um, we've seen him fight Cena without Cena without the belt is above title. Yeah. At the same time, though, he has to remain a relevant character and performer. Mm-hmm. One that is can conceivably dominate. At any given moment. For two reasons. Number one, just for the general health of SmackDown. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I I was thinking about this the other day. And one of the reasons, and this is so silly. This is so absolutely silly. But I honestly do think that one of the reasons why SmackDown to this day still feels like a B-show is because it's an hour less than Raw. Mm -hmm. And I understand that Raw would be so much better served by being two hours. Yeah. But the fact that it has more breathing room and even more bloat. May, it, it sort of gives you this, I think, subconscious feeling that this is the big show because it's three hours and they can afford to have bloat. 
You know yeah. what I mean? There's yeah, that yeah. kind of thing about it. And SmackDown, it's like, oh, that's still relegated to two hours. And it's just well, also also the most pay per views are three hours. So Raw just kind of mm-hmm. feels like a pared down pay per view. Right, every week. exactly. And so SmackDown with an extra hour filled, you know, with bloat. And I'm not advocating for that at all. But I think one way to make it feel bigger in our, our one of the friendos luke from australia mentioned this in a video when he's talking about goldberg being a marquee guy if you think marquee guy do you do you think the undertaker when he does come back if he does come back is he gonna be on smackdown no he's gonna be on raw yeah you know you never think that you know shinsuke nakamura when he comes back he's not going to smack when bailey came back granted we know that was for storyline reasons but she's going to be on Raw. Raw, like you've said before, is the show that you need to see. Yeah. SmackDown is the show that it's fun to catch. Yeah. You know, we watch it, you know, because it's our job to watch it. And I would probably watch it because AJ Styles is there. Yeah. Um, anyways, but, but SmackDown needs heavy hitters like Bray Wyatt. Yeah. And being in a feud with the guy who just beat Brock Lesnar is a heavy hitting feud. Yeah. But when that guy, when Randy Orton, who's a professional, when he no sells the idea of Bray Wyatt, we no sell the idea of Bray Wyatt. Exactly. We don't give him weight. Yep. So and that's once, what that's what Bray needs. He needs that weight. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, he can lose every goddamn match, but if everybody is changed after they go through a match with Bray Wyatt, even if it's for a couple weeks. Going yeah. through some self doubt, freaked yeah. out. I don't like. We've we said it before before the before the split. Xavier Woods was doing exactly what you need to do with Bray Wyatt. Yes, and the only guy who's, he's the only guy who's done that since Daniel Bryan did it two years ago or three years yeah. ago. Or yeah, anyways, even John Cena did a little bit. He, even John he, Cena he, did. Started yeah, he, doubting he, himself. Yeah, he started doubting himself. Do I need to go heal for this guy? You know, do I need to turn to things that I haven't done before? Yep. He's changed. Yep. You know, and he came out of it more confident of the fact that. I, what I'm doing is the correct way to proceed. Yes. Because I can bury guys if I want. Um, okay, so. Good talk. Uh, let's see. Usos versus the Hype Bro. So Zack Ryder had a tall task. He had to take on the Usos in a handicap match. Not just the Usos. Uh, the newly heel Usos who are really entertaining as heels. You know what? It was it was a, it was a really, really good first step. Um, yes. They were brooding. They were talking mess to the crowd. They had a great new look. I mean, there is just Bullet Club, Bullet Club looking gear, and I got hyped immediately. I was like, "I see Bullet Club looking gear. I want to see them team up with AJ now." And a part of my little brain here was thinking during that championship match, I was like, "Well, how are they going to get this title on AJ um, in a way that doesn't make Dean look bad?" And I was thinking to myself, "If those Usos came out and helped them, who oh boy, that'd be something else because then they can enlist AJ to help them." Get the tag titles off of uh, Heath and Rhino, which we're going to talk to him uh, talking about in a second. Spoiler yeah. alert. Yeah. So, anyways, Usos stuck on the Hype Bros, and the Usos won. Um, I know it's my gag, and I, the people of the people have turned this gag into something far some, far more serious than maybe I had ever intended it to be. Yeah. But Mojo Raleigh, the imaginary friend of Zach, of Zach Ryder, his Tyler Durden, if you will. Yeah. Um, there is a there is a still on uh, WWE.com today. Uh-huh. Um, from that match that had uh, Zack Ryder standing on a turnbuckle uh-huh. with uh, the Hype Bros package, Titan Tron package in the background. Yeah. But no Mojo Raleigh. <laughs> and so I was just wondering if someone from WWE had caught on to uh, our gag. <laughs> that could be. You never know, man. Somebody might be watching. This. Somebody might just be cracking up at this over there in WWE and they're like throwing that shit in. <laughs> man. Oh my God. It's And it's so funny too because because here's the thing that bums me out, dude. And I told you this off camera is that there's a part of me, a small part of me that's kind of bummed out that I started all this shit because Mo, there's so much to talk about with Mojo. Oh, his, when he was in the ring to begin this match and he was, he was like trying to intimidate him or get hype or something where he's like rolling dude, around. And, and what did I feet. say when he, it when I hilarious. saw that, it was great. What did I say though? What did I say when I saw that? I said, it looks like somebody was playing him. As oh, the yeah, character, they hitting taunts. and they just kept on hitting different taunts. Or it was like he was like the uh, the screen and custom character when you're figuring out what taunts you want your guy to have. Yeah, and he yeah. just started doing all sorts of random ones. Yeah, but but then as soon as I say that, everybody says as soon as I brought that up on Twitter, everybody's like, "What are you talking about? Who are you talking about? Who's Mojo? You're, you're breaking kayfabe." 
<laughs> I know. There's one guy yelled at me. You're breaking up right, KV. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are great. Uh, so the Usos moved on after defeating Zack Ryder. Yeah. Uh, then we got a Heath and Rhino interview, which is pretty fucking entertaining. Yeah, Heath said he had some of his wife's uh, crab cakes. Yeah. And it gave him the runs. The thing that I loved about it, though, was that, like, he thought the interview had ended. Yeah. He walks off and within two seconds had circled back to Rhino and started talking to him as if, they were, as if the cameras were off. Yeah. Uh, that was just, these guys have such great chemistry. Um, and Heath is, by just by virtue of his yokel personality and sense of humor that he's embraced and it's like his sense of humor in our view and i know people out there are like oh no we always like Heath. it's always been so mis misused mm -hmm. it's for my liking and i know for your liking as well yeah. and this is the perfect way of using it yes it really is because and it's interesting because they are kind of straddling that line between hokey fun and uh, and being legitimate. Yeah. Um, we could just fast forward to that. Heath and Rhino went over the, the Usos cleanly. Yeah. Which was surprising. We thought yes. for sure. I thought for sure. I was like, because when I read, when I read that uh, American Alpha wasn't going to be kept off TV, they, they said what I read was they weren't going to miss any TV. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't just mean SmackDown. That could potentially mean No Mercy. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, uh, backlash as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay. They're going to want to book the Uso strong, have Jason Jordan run out and, you know, and tackle one of them or something. I don't know. Do whenever, you know, one of his suplexes. He does great suplexes. Yeah. Have him do that. And then that's a legitimate way to get the Usos to lose and have, you know, Heath and Ryan and Rhino win. Or I thought it was perfectly within reason that the Usos would win. You know, that's what I thought was that was happen, your pick. That would have given them more heel heat. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And then you can have Heath and, you know, Heath and Rhino, they're not going to stop being over. Yeah. And, um, I wasn't, and then the I wasn't sure what they would do with Slater and Rhino if they had won because their chase or Slater's chase for the contract was kind of the story. So once he mm -hmm. gets it, where do they go from there? Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, you know, it, it makes you wonder, though. It's like it, we're I think maybe sometimes we're just surprised when they strike when the iron's hot as opposed to carrying it out too long. Yeah, because that could be carried out too long as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't know. I mean, look, all I know is that because I think they could have carried it on. They but last night that crowd was hot, yeah. hot for Slater, dude, and yeah. Rhino. But, yeah. you know, Slater's the story. Yeah. Hot for him. Those guys have great chemistry. Strike while it's hot. Just do it now. Like the same yeah. thing with Becky Lynch. I had it in my head. Maybe they're going to make her chase this thing. Maybe they're going to put some doubt in our minds. And then who knows? Even Marie comes back. They do something stupid and put the belt on her for a year. You know what I mean? So there's always that concern that they're going to do that. Yeah. But they SmackDown especially seems to be a bit more on the strike while the iron's hot. Yeah. AJ, we thought it was entirely possible their first meetup he wouldn't he wouldn't win yeah. and we'd get to see the title change in No Mercy, but they did it last night. Yeah. So, I like that. Um and the crowd was hugely over for Slater and Rhino. Yeah. And they they've just they've told a real, who would have thought that one of the most compelling stories and most well executed stories would be Heath Slater chasing a contract. I know. That's really good, and he's been he's been killing it, and Rhino's been killing it. So yep. good for both those guys. Exactly. Yep. Um, Let's talk about the uh, the Miz versus Dolph for the IC title. Good match. How really long? Good are, match. Do you still have Wikipedia? Up? How long is this match? Um, I think it's about eighteen minutes. Okay, I was gonna. I would have said at least fifteen, maybe even twenty. Okay. So eighteen right. twenty-two. Okay. All right. Um, they did sort of do what we had hoped they were gonna do: give Miz a bit more intensity. He uh, he unveiled a bunch of submission moves that mm -hmm. I don't remember him ever doing before. I don't remember either, but then I've never really paid too close attention to the Miz's matches in general. I know that when he teamed up with Flair as a face, he started doing the figure four. Yeah, he's he's done that before, but the, but he uh, was doing like, like the surfboard, the surfboard. You know, I think yeah, he'd done that before. You know. Yeah, there was and they, like Morrow was pointing that out very loudly. Yeah. Um. And so, yeah, he, he debuted a couple. I was really hoping, I was really, really hoping that he would be adopting some of Daniel Bryan's moves. 
Um, oh, that'd been interesting. I thought that would have been really fascinating and yeah. really cool. And I, a couple people on Twitter, when we tweet out at real going in raw, I know I've got mine here and then Larson's is over there, our handles. But when we live tweet, we do real at real going in raw. A couple people on the Twitter were saying, you know, it'd be cool if he did a couple of Daniel Bryan's like the yes lock. Yeah, um, I was hoping he would finish it with uh, with the what, what what was the name of his running leg or his running kick? The, oh, the uh, knee plus. Yeah, the knee plus. I was hoping to see that. Um, I wanted to work see him work strong, stronger, yeah. Yeah. sort of to prove a point. Um, he ended up going over thanks to some interference from Maurice. She emptied a can of mace in Dolph's eyes, Yikes. which yeah. I can only hope. Will lead, and I know it probably won't because WWE.com would have posted a thing as like a work injury that Dolph would have, we'd have done the blind angle. Because <laughs> I can never get enough of a guy acting like he's blind and he's really not. <laughs> the blindfold reveal is always the best. <laughs> um, so Maurice emptied a can of mace or pepper spray or something in his face. Yeah, yeah. And then Miz went over. I don't know. What did you think of that finish? You know, in, in one respect... It'd be nice for the Miz to show some additional intensity. Yeah, but also if 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 he's gonna be a heel, it makes sense for him not to do that. Yeah, I know, I know. But the, in that in that respect, isn't it just same old Miz? I mean, it is, I, I guess it is to a certain extent. But if 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 there's this tension going on where people call him a coward, mm -hmm. he doesn't want to be perceived as a coward. Yeah. But when he's he's really put to the challenge of proving he's not, he always falls back to what he normally does. Right. So, I mean, there, there's something to work with with that give and take. In, his, in the, the backstage interview he did last night with Daniel Bryan, he was going on, on about how no one respects him and he wanted to renegotiate his contract. Yeah. And uh, I agree. It would have been cool if he had busted out some of Daniel Bryan's moves. Mm -hmm. I but like the I, idea. I think, I think ultimately if they want to keep him a heel, that he can't start working strong style. I know. Um, I, I I agree with you. I just think it'd be it'd be an interesting way to pivot his character because I mean you know he can be a heel and all, but I mean you got Baron Corbin as a heel. You've got who else? You got you got AJ Styles who technically is a heel. Um, I mean shit, but the crowd was booing Dean last night. Yeah. Um, I mean I don't know I don't know what the the the, the ratio is, um, and you certainly don't want to see the Miz start going face. Yeah, but in terms of, because I mean, if, if, if he's going to start working strong, then he'd have to go from "quote unquote" soft, yeah. cowardly wrestling to brutal, essentially. Well, I'll for put him it this: to still work stiff and be a heel. I'll put it this way: I, I, I think there was more intensity last night. We saw some yeah. new stuff from him last night. But if your main opponent is Daniel Bryan. Then I don't care in term because it is. I mean, this story is Ms. Daniel Bryan, and then Dolph yeah. sort of interjects and says, "Well, yeah. prove that you're not." But the overarching story is Ms. Daniel Bryan. We're not going to get a wrestling blow off with this. No. No. But I do really like the when he mentioned the contract negotiations. You mentioned off camera while we were watching. It'd be kind of cool if he pulled like a Jeff Jarrett holdout thing. Oh yeah, At, on the spot. Yeah, on the spot. That would have been really interesting. And then when he gets what he wants. He rubs it in Daniel's face by using Daniel's moves. And then he comes backstage after the match and Daniel Bryan suspends him. Exactly. And so you got you have a couple things. And so that sets up you know, that that sets up a more interesting heel than just him saying he's not a coward, but being yeah. a coward. You know, yeah. because yeah. the bottom line is if your main overarching opponent is Daniel Bryan, you're not gonna be a face. You're not gonna get cheered because Daniel Bryan gets cheered. Yeah, yeah. But that it'll set you up for being a much more interesting character. Yeah. So um, let's talk main event, right? Um, yeah. Usos went over, or uh, Slater Rhino went over. We already talked about that. They had a great little celebration in the ring. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, AJ Styles, best wrestler on the planet, and I think should have been the number one wrestler of the year according to PWI, but they chose Roman Reigns. That's okay. That's their magazine. If we want our own magazine, we'll start our magazine. There we go. Um, but AJ Styles, for my money, best wrestler on the planet right now. You can I get mean, a good match out of virtually anybody. Anybody. Seen. He went in there with Dean Ambrose, and Dean Ambrose has just, you know, ever since Stone Cold said he's been resting on your laurels, I've noticed he's been resting on his laurels. And I didn't want – you remember, coming out of that Stone Cold podcast, I was all about Dean. I was like, yep. man – 
hearing him talk and hearing him explain his point of view really put him over in my eyes. Like, I already yeah. like Dean. I, you know, who doesn't like Dean? But I do feel that either, I've said this before, either due to creative or due to Dean himself, haven't been feeling his world title run. I yeah. just, I mean, there there is aspects of it that I kind of appreciated, but when you have a talent like AJ Styles, you know, and he goes in there with Dean Ambrose, and it's obvious that this match was, I mean, I'm not going to call it a match of the year candidate, but it was a really, really good match. Yeah. AJ Styles put him in there with anybody. You get, he gets a great, a really good match out of Roman Reigns. He gets a really good match out of Dean Ambrose. That What's the, you know, the common denominator is AJ Styles. Yeah. And uh, really, I like that uh, really AJ seemed to have brought out a more physical aspect of Dean Ambrose because usually in his matches, mm-hmm. it kind of, he has the same, you know, few moves he does. And that's that. But there was a couple mm-hmm. spots where it seemed like Dean was being exceptionally physical. Right, right. And AJ was selling the hell out of it. Yeah, yeah. But AJ knows, I think the thing, and it's funny because you squirmed a couple times because we're old. We don't want to see another old guy get hurt. Yeah. You know, I mean, we don't want to see anybody get hurt. We see Sasha Banks out there. She's a kid. And, you know, we she does a suicide dive or Big E, for God's sake, does a suicide dive. We're like... Stop doing that. We don't need to see that to enjoy you. You know what I mean? Like we we love your matches regardless. We don't need to see you suicide. Track. In the same as in the same respect of things, when <coughs> AJ and Dean did that uh, off the top turnbuckle thing, yeah, and AJ lands on his feet and Dean lands on his back, we're just like, oh god, there's too many moving pieces. Somebody's gonna break a neck. Yeah, um, but they didn't because they know what they're doing. And but yeah, yeah there were a couple times when uh, when uh, Dean was getting very physical with AJ, and AJ sold the hell out of it. And yep. I think AJ's just a really damn good seller, you know. Yeah. So um, really, really good match ended with uh, AJ kicking Dean in the nuts yep. while the ref uh, was sort of not paying. He was recovering from being accidentally hit. Yeah, and then AJ hit the Styles Clash. Mm-hmm. Got and uh, and and got the pin and, and picked up the the victory. Very interesting. That crowd was very pro AJ and yes. was was vocally anti Dean at points. Yeah, anytime, especially towards the latter half of the match when Dean got the upper hand, there was a pretty noticeable chorus of boos. There are some guys that everybody just knows, heel or face, that they just simply know. This guy should have the world title. Well, I think it's we talked about this before. Is uh, I think people tend now to look beyond heel or face. Yeah, and they'll cheer for people whose work they enjoy and respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and AJ regardless one of the, if they're heel or face. Yeah, and on top of that, AJ is just simply one of those guys who you can tell is having fun. Yep, and regardless of if he's pulling heel moves or not, you're rooting for that guy. Yep, because you're having fun with him. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's funny. Whenever whenever they try to make it look like Dean's having fun, it always comes across as contrived. Mm-hmm. Like when he comes back from the casino, he's got the silly hat on. That to oh, me was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that to me was like, you're wasting him. You're you're absolutely wasting him. Like I, you, I see him, you see him last night sell injuries during the match. And you see the intensity he has. You know, there's, there's a, a couple moments where, where he was selling – um, some moves, and, and then also, you know, like after hitting some moves on AJ, and there was l- legitimate intensity in his face. Mm-hmm, yeah. It's like, you you know, I think like we both want to see that Ambrose more often. Yeah, I know, exactly. And when you just have him wearing silly hats and doing pouring a lot of sugar into coffee, you're just sitting there thinking, why are you doing what? Like, what is that? He should be – that. that's just – that's quir- that's the that, that's quirky Dean Ambrose. That's quirky. Yeah. That's not lunatic. That's yeah. not – this guy and I know that in the Stone Cold thing, he said, "Oh, that's marketing," but that's fine. But still, your character is supposed to be the unhinged guy. He's supposed to yeah. be, you know, if not the lunatic, he's supposed to be that unhinged, unpredictable guy. Not, oh, there's silly Dean. Like you know, you, at at that point, you're honestly stra- straying into Roman Reigns territory. When we were like, "This is boring as shit. I don't want to yeah. see this." You know, yeah. I want to see Dean be that intense guy. Yeah, you know, like that moment where he was driving AJ's head into the mat repeatedly. Yeah. I'd never seen him do that before. Yeah. That seems like an unhinged, unpredictable thing to do. Exactly. So we get to see probably the rematch at No Mercy, I'd imagine. Yeah, I would yeah. suspect. What happened? I don't know. I don't know where. I mean, 
you know, you said, and I think it probably makes sense. AJ holds the belt till WrestleMania, and then he drops it to Cena, so Cena can get a couple more world title uh, win that uh, runs in. Yeah. What happens to Dean after this? I don't know. Say we'll have. Assume there's a rematch at No Mercy. Maybe they'll do another one at a Survivor Series. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. And then, I don't know. I could see Dean versus Randy. I was going to say AJ versus Randy. I could AJ see that. AJ versus Randy. Really? You can see. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's that's a high profile guy. Mm-hmm. Dean versus. We've seen Dean versus Br- Dean versus Bray a million times. Yeah. Maybe elevate somebody. Maybe have Dean put Baron Corbin through the ringer. I don't know. I mean, there, there's there are pieces there you can work with. Yeah. It's just not a whole lot. Just not a, a plethora of them, if you will. Yes. So um, that'll be interesting. I mean, it, it's it's. I, I would have liked to have seen more Dean Ambrose as world champion before the brand split. Yeah. Just to see what him really carrying the company would have looked like. Because I think SmackDown is at such a disadvantage in the first place. And WWE in general doesn't help things when they openly try to acknowledge. It's it's one thing to have SmackDown's commentators saying this is the most prestigious title because it has a lineage. Yeah. But when WWE.com is tweeting out the most prestigious prize in WWE is up for grabs right now on Raw, and they're talking about the Universal title. You're not doing SmackDown any favors. Nope. You know, I mean, they really, they, they, they really do. And the funny thing is, dude, it really does feel like the SmackDown performers take pride in trying to, trying to be the better show. Yeah. Trying to prove that they can hang with Raw, but they're so hamstrung. They're so yeah. at a disadvantage immediately. That uh, I don't know to take to to to, to make SmackDown a second must see show. It, it's going to take a little bit more. I mean, they, apparently they're getting their own cruiserweight division, which they're a two hour show. It already seems like they're, you know, I I don't know. I don't know how you do that. You know, I don't know how you yeah, do that. Yeah, I don't know. And, I don't know either. And, and feel like a big show. You know, I, it, it surprises me that. <clears throat> Well, I think they want to make it feel like a, a, a show that belongs in the same category as Raw. Did they have to adjust some of their presentation issues? They do. That crane shot was everywhere last night, and it just makes it makes the proceedings feel so small. Yeah, because yeah. the the ring feels smaller, the arena feels smaller. Yeah, I mean the set looked good. The the, the new set looks good. Yeah, that all looks great. That looks great. I honestly think that I I think that the the perception. I'll go back to what I said earlier. The perception of it being not as good. And look, our Twitter feed blows up with people saying, you guys are crazy. SmackDown's better every single week. And that's great. If you guys are out there thinking that, and maybe it's just, dude, honestly, maybe it's just we're too old for our perceptions to change more fluidly than other people. That could be. That could just be in our blood at this point because we're both old. I don't know. That could be. I don't know. Um, I do think that perception of a two-hour show versus a three-hour show that's that speaks to me anyways mm-hmm. and i'd be fine with a smackdown black hole ripping into time and space if it meant they got the benefit of marquee names mm-hmm. you know it's like daniel bryan was talking shit about brock lesnar it's like whatever i feel about brock lesnar and how i feel his matches are now he's an important name he's a big marquee yeah. name yeah. and if you think about back when SmackDown was relevant and better than Raw because Paul Heyman was writing it, mm-hmm. look at the names that were on there. Oh, I know. You know, you had Brock, you had Eddie, you had yep. probably Benoit. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I don't know how you, um, until you have the heavy. I mean, now in my opinion, and I love, I love Kevin Owens. He's probably my number two guy in the company. My number one guy right now is AJ Styles, and he's holding the, the WWE World Champion. Maybe that'll change stuff. But unless he has, like, other big names to work with, like John Cena's gone right now. Yeah, that's why I, I thought Randy Orton would be the, the next logical probably, opponent yeah, after You're probably Dean. right. But it's like, have have Cena and Bray renew their rivalry or yeah. something. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to I don't do know. it. Yeah. You want to answer some questions? we got a few of them. Yeah, sure. Do we have time for that? Are you good? Yeah, yeah. i got about 15 minutes. Okay, yeah. Let's answer some questions. All right. Uh, Weatherstein. Okay. How long do you see AJ holding the belt, and who will be who? Who will he lose it to? I think we both. I think uh, he'll hold to WrestleMania, lose to John Cena. Yeah, I, I think that's probably right. I like that. I like that because I want to. I want a long AJ World Title reign. I want to see what he yep. can do with it. Yep. Carlos Hackworth. Backlash was a pretty good pay per view. Do you think Dean will go heel to get the title back? No. 
No, but be interesting he could Dean become went, a little more. Uh, Dean's never really been heel, has he? Besides when he was with the Shield. Yeah, except when he was the Shield. Yeah, he could become a little more unpredictable, maybe. I think I'd like to see that because I think having the belt might have inhibited him in some ways. Could be. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Flame Spitter. How high does Backlash list compare to other pay per views this year? Um, as a wrestling show, it was good. It's quality matches, quality, sh- you know, what's, it's a quality what's show. The best pay per view this year has been probably um, Battleground. Battleground, I'd say. That was a top notch. Yeah. Um, this is no Battleground. It's you know it's kind of in the middle tier. Yeah, yeah. It's it was yeah it wasn't a bad one. Yeah, yeah. Buncy the Frog. Alexa Bliss really showed what she can. <clears throat> excuse me, what she can do during Backlash. What do you think she? Who do you think she should be paired with? Rivalry or team to show off her character and skill set? Um, leading up to Backlash, they were teasing a uh, uh, Becky mm-hmm. uh, Alexa Bliss feud, and I'd like to see that. Hopefully, that comes to fruition. I agree. I think she. I think she has been. I think her and Carmella both. A have have oh I mean they were both on NXT so I guess benefited from the brand split, but <clears throat> but I think they both have re- it's obvious they've been busting their ass yeah and that's kind of what we want to see opportunities. that's what we want to see like Carmel like I think Alexa is a better wrestler yeah. but Carmella is you can tell she's really giving it her all yeah um, and I think that they both are but Alexa I'm actually kind of like sometimes when she does some shit in the ring I'm like look at that that's good I didn't expect that you know yeah that's, that's good. Uh, Chris Kimmel, do you think Heath Slater and Rhino will lose the belts right away now that they won them so Heath can get a contract? I said to you after that match was over that I wouldn't be surprised if they lost the belts on SmackDown this week. I don't know. I guess I wouldn't be surprised. I, I, I just don't know. I don't know how they're going to start booking these belts on SmackDown. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know either. Um... Boy, I don't know. I, I I suspect that that's that could be. I, I'll put it this way: much bigger chance of them winning the or of them losing their belts this week on SmackDown than Becky Lynch losing her belt on SmackDown. Oh yeah. So there you go for what it's worth. Uh, Jeffrey Dizkowski, what's next for Bray? Does a loss to Kane damage him even more? We talked about that a bit. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I look. I, I, I don't know. I, I think that I'll go back to what I said probably like a year ago when you, me, and Dan would talk about this endlessly. Does it damage him more? I don't think so. Does it keep him in a holding pattern? Definitely. Does not winning? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much further Bray Wyatt can go down. Like, how many more losses can he take before people are like, "Oh man, he'll," you know. He's Bray Wyatt, like I said, to this day. He can still, they can still bring him up to the main event scene and he'll still be hot shit. But it doesn't, certainly doesn't help him losing no. to Kane. No. But does it hurt him? A little bit. Short term, yes. James Rodriguez. I don't, I don't know. Do you think SmackDown delivered a good show because they were given an extra hour to work with? They, were, they had, they delivered a good show because they, they're, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, they have yeah. less of a roster and more and more time to fill, and they so, let they let the performers perform. Yeah, they so, yeah, they, they did benefit yeah. from it. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was entertaining through and through. It was an entertaining yeah. pay per view. Yeah, just wasn't like oh my god. Yeah, heated pillow. What's your opinion on Miz and Dolph Ziggler's match start? Doesn't that look like Punk's UFC? Yes. You mentioned that when it happened. And I think I think, and then somebody I saw a gif of it, and I saw. A couple of people were tweeting about it. Also, um, somebody said something. Somebody said something like, "I'm very proud, and I respect the Miz for running at Dolph Ziggler and being taken down and being placed in a rear naked choke." Because <laughs> everybody's like, "I respect the hell out of Punk for doing what he did." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he rushed a guy and got placed in a rear naked choke. <laughs> um, so that was funny. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it was fairly obvious that's exactly what yes. they did. They probably both got a kick out of that. Yes. Uh, Jefferson. Especially The Miz. Yeah. Jefferson, <laughs> how do you book Luke Harper's return, and do you see Bray being a threat on the main event level after the Orton program? Even if it was Luke Harper last night instead of Kane, that was going to come out and face. Yeah. And even, dude, even if it was him 
they got the win over Bray. That would have been intriguing. Thanks yeah. to you know, thanks to Randy Orton. That yeah. would have been intriguing, and we would yeah, have been like storyline potential there. We would have been like, oh my god, look at that! But we know nothing's going to happen with Kane, and we don't really want anything to happen with Kane and Bray because that's waste everybody's time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Even Lorenzo. if Bray wins in that situation, it's kind of a waste of time. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, Lorenzo Bellini, how would you book Bray's rise to become the top heel on SmackDown? Well, he has to win first. Yeah, this is a win a lot. I mean, you, lot. you you talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Like, there's there's any number of ways you can do it. Have him start to have him start hijacking the show. Yeah, yeah. You know, start having him do that. Start at, Bill. I I loved I loved. When they did the the Wyatt family's version of the final deletion with the mm-hmm. New Day, mm-hmm. and you had like a whole army of Wyatts waiting yeah. for them, yeah, do that, yeah. You can you can make him be this dark cloud over SmackDown yeah. by doing stuff like that. Yep. Next, KJ from NY. Do you think Baron Corbin's pre-show win will amount to something like a title shot? Not right now. Mm. Strictly, primarily because the uh, both singles champions are heels. Yeah, it should be. It. I mean, it. You would think that it would elevate him to the main card. Yeah, I mean that match should elevate. It should have elevated Apollo Crews. That match should have been on the main card. Yeah. So no. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Samantha Ottiziano. I'm sure I got that wrong. Um, what was your first reaction to AJ Styles winning the belt? What does it mean now that we have two heels at the, as the faces of Raw and SmackDown? We were both happy. <sighs> yeah, we're both super happy about that. Yeah. Um, because the, 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 the belt situation is... I was going to say it's balanced. All the New Day are super over there, the tag champions. Although the club, the club has to get those belts soon. At some point, you would think. Boy. Heels across uh, the board. Um, I'm fine with it, and mainly because I think I honestly think AJ <clears throat> kind of supersedes heel yeah. and face. Yeah, the crowd was firmly behind him last night. I can guarantee here like in it. Sacramento they're going to be firmly behind him at No Mercy, and he can try to be heel as much as he wants. But hey, he hasn't really he hasn't like uh, run down the crowd at all, has he? He's just run down John Cena. I think. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if they try to up his heel game or if they go with him as is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, Patrick Sparks. With Alexa Bliss being eliminated first, do you think we will still get the money Becky versus Bliss feud? Eventually. Hopefully. I think we I, I mean, so. I think, yeah. I, 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 would, I would speculate. I would think sooner than later. I think Carmella yeah. and Nikki are going to continue their thing. Yes. And I think Alexa is a natural opponent for Becky Lynch. Yes. Uh, Martin Garcia. He has three questions. How would you book a, uh, AJ Styles' title run? And who would he lose it to? We just already uh, answered that question. Do you think Ambrose should go heel and, and AJ should go face? Because of last night, Ambrose getting some booze and Styles getting a huge pop. Uh, we talked about that a bit, too. How but great! No, think, how great would it be? How great would it be <clears throat> if Cena came back immediately, uh, like after No Mercy? Yeah, had a run in or had had a feud till the Rumble with AJ, and maybe Cena picks up a title win just to add one more to his notch, and AJ gets it back, and then at the Rumble for the not for the belt, but to kick off a feud, we get Bray versus AJ. Bray wins at WrestleMania next year. Does that change Bray at all? It has to, right? Yeah. That's good for him. <laughs> yeah. And could you imagine the matches Bray Wyatt versus AJ? Yeah. Like, we already know AJ makes people better. Yeah, that'd be But great. Bray, who we already like in the ring. Yeah. That'd be great. That would be great. He has one more question, not necessarily wrestling related. He says, since it's football season, who's your guys' favorite football team? And who's your favorite football player of all time? My favorite football team right now is called uh, Christopher Kaufman. It's your fantasy team. Yeah. It's my fantasy team. Yeah. I've I didn't been a even... Philadelphia Eagles fan for a number of years. Did you watch any football yesterday? No, I didn't watch it down. I think I'm a, I might watch Monday nights, um, but I don't know. I like These days, I've just got too much to do. Mm-hmm. Like I try to really take advantage of like the days, like my days off that I give myself. Yeah. But I'm still doing stuff for the, for the channel. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I enjoy I enjoy working on stuff for the channel. I enjoy 
trying to come up with new assets, designing stuff, designing logos. Like I need to get I'm today. I'm going to, it's a day off, but I'm going to be shipping some packages out to, to our $50 patrons mm -hmm. um, and getting some of these postcards out. So, uh, so mm -hmm. because of that, and then yesterday, like my wife got me like a, a Swedish massage for my birthday. So we went to go do that. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Um, anyways, getting back to football. I don't know how much I'm going to watch this. You're like, I, I, I really like it for fantasy football. I think I've just transitioned to just really liking fantasy football instead of like actual football. I'll always like football. I'll probably watch on Monday nights. Um, I say the Niners are my team, but I'm, I'm such a bandwagoner with them. Like, I don't really care who wins and loses. Like, you've been a Philly Eagles fan since you were a kid. And mm -hmm. you're still a fan because you were a fan of them when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Um I'm always, I've always been like a hometown fan in general of things. So like the Sacramento Kings, my favorite team in sports, largely because they're just they're the only thing Sacramento has in terms of pro sports. Yeah. Um, the Niners are just to me like by proximity, they're the closest team. I know Oakland's there too, but I'm not going to be an Oakland Raider fan because um, they're all weird. Uh, so I guess it's the Niners. But I I don't really get excited when they win or lose. It doesn't really yeah. matter to me. Yeah, I like to see them do good. Yeah. I think I'm more of I'm even more of a Patriots fan than I am because everybody hates the Patriots, and I kind of like I kind of like rooting for the team that everybody hates. You like the heels? I do like the heels in football, basketball. Yeah. No, I I like my team in basketball. Okay, uh, Vincent Palmieri. Uh, he has a long question. All those kind of. Get down to the cliff notes version. Yeah. Uh, what makes you like a guy? Because he talks about how he's always liked Miz and never really necessarily understood how people disliked him. Uh, what makes you like a guy? And what was the Miz doing wrong up until now, in your opinions, that kept the audience from appreciating him up until this point? Um, I think I've never been particularly enamored with his. And this is, you know, this isn't just storyline shit right now. But I've never been particularly enamored with his ring style. Mm -hmm. A lot I, of his I, matches I, seem pretty formulaic. We we take pride in trying to be positive here on the show. Yeah. I was watching some Piper's Pit stuff the other day for research for the show, and it really made me think. This is this that that was how I liked the Miz. I thought the Miz, and there was the thing is, Piper never had held the world title. He held the Intercontinental, but he yep. wasn't like one of the greatest Intercontinental champions yeah. ever. You know, he was no like Rick Ruder or perfect. Um, Piper didn't need any belts to be very effective yeah. at some very, very important things. And I feel the same way about the Miz. It's like you watch Piper fight, and it's like he was good, but the, Piper was a really good character. Yeah. Who instigated feuds? Yes. Who like made them even hotter, just by virtue of him sort of being in the mix. Yeah. And I feel like the Miz is at his best when he's doing that. Now, right now, he's he's had the world the, the Intercontinental title, and on a depleted roster for SmackDown, I think he does elevate that Intercontinental Championship. Yeah. But traditionally, back when there was a lot of talent not getting recognized. Um, for doing really, really good on work in the ring, for being very intense promo guys. The Miz, I don't think, was ever that. Yeah. And that's what I like. I like... Well, you know, ever since he dropped the the title after WrestleMania 27 up until now, I can't mm -hmm. think of one storyline that he was in that was in any way captivating. Right, I agree. And I think part of that's on him. I, you, can't, you can't always blame creative for that stuff, you mm -hmm. know? Um, leading up to WrestleMania 27, I thought that here's the thing. I thought that he did everything he possibly could to be something that he couldn't be that, you know, you look at CM Punk and his promo work. I, I was asking you the other day, I was like, name me a better promo than the pipe bomb. Yeah. And you came up with the dusty roads, hard times. Yeah. That was 30 years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so the Miz was trying so and you could see him trying to exude charisma on his face. And he's a charismatic guy yeah, he in a certain role. And so when you're trying to be top heel against John Cena, CM Punk did that perfectly. Mm 
mm-hmm. because he exudes that natural confidence and some that that's that's an intangible yeah it's simply something that not everybody has but that's not to say there isn't a role for him it's just there's a specific role that i think he's really good at mm-hmm. and really works for him and being in the world title scene isn't that because you need guys who are weightier who are heavier yeah you know well, that's a perfect segue into this next question okay uh, James Garcia, thoughts on giving Miz a world title shot to make it a heel Miz versus heel Cena's feud, sorry, heel Styles feud, as a way for Miz to prove Daniel Bryan wrong. You know what's interesting is that now, with the depleted SmackDown roster, he might get a chance at some point just kind of because there's not enough wrestlers to feud with, you know? And I wouldn't be opposed to that. No. And I think it would be very interesting, now that there's been so much time since 27, it would be really interesting to see him and Cena Mm -hmm. again and see how it would be different and see if Miz... The the cool thing about the Miz now is that he's got all that experience behind him. And at a certain point when somebody's been there so long, you're just like, man, he's been around a while. I'm going to give him more of a benefit of the doubt. I'm going to naturally, you know, give myself over to what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's sort of starting to happen with him now with the no, IC I think so. title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, so people are he, respecting not just his work right now, but the work he's done throughout his career. Exactly. And when he says things like, I work the way I work so that I can always be here, you understand he's kind of right. You know, yeah. and you start yeah. to appreciate a guy, you know, you, you, you start to appreciate a guy who's always busting his hump for the company mm-hmm. and he might not be the top performer, but you appreciate the fact that he's busting his ass. Yeah. You know, yep. and I think him and Maurice make a real, I think she adds a lot to the equation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, on now with the brand split, I think Miz probably is benefiting in terms of like who's benefiting the most top five Miz is in there. Oh, yeah. You know, definitely, definitely. All right. Is that it? No more questions? No more questions. All right. We'll be back with another episode of Going in Raw tomorrow to talk about Raw. And uh, yeah, so until then, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.